This is FTC, and this is going to be my the last match of the losers bracket before we go into the next round. LB16 between F rate and Blame God. This is the pre battle analysis. As you can see, most of the colors are darker, meaning I think, meaning I think Blame God is gonna is gonna win this be, because F rate squad just well let's, let's, looking first at HP F. Notice how if you just match up units, the samurai has more HP on Blame God. Let's go out. The ninja has more HP. The priestess has more HP than than the geomancer. Both of them have white magic, and then um, the Uribo has more HP than than the time mage. And furthermore, the only the only reason why it's not an absolute advantage is because Blame God has two units that have to stand right next to the target, while F Raid only has one. But that shouldn't be too significant. Damage again is in red only because I was... Because objectively that time mage can deal a lot of damage with uh, time magic, with uh, not time magic, solid magic, especially Cyclops and Salamander, especially to the Priestess and the Samurai, both on, on Blame God Squad, both of which have 70 faith. However, in actuality she has the worst HP on that squad and can be one-shotted by that ninja, so damage Technic and and um and Blame God's ninja actually has a strong has a stronger weapon on his hands, a stronger set of weapons. So technically, that damage should favor Blame Blame God as well, as long as that ninja is still up. Status status favors Blame God by a lot. I mean, F Rate's team only is relying on F Rate the Geomancer to do Geomancy, but she does I think seventy damage with Geomancy. So she's really dependent on just. Hoping to get attack up off, I mean, not attack up, a status proc off at twenty percent. Compare this with the wild bow, which has an innate, which has a uh, starting sixty three percent, um, at neutral combat with charm, which is a far stronger status usually, unless it's petrify, dead, or uh, stop. And the same could be said for the priestess, who has a fairly high charm rate as well. And this is not considering compass. When you consider compass, it gets worse. Worse because both the both the priestess and the wild bow have good compat with that ninja, which is the highest damage dealer on um, um which is the highest damage dealer on F rate squad, and has good compat with the rest of the squad, which means that ninja could literally rip apart the rest of the squad if charmed. Then you then you can look at luck, and of course, like I mentioned, luck just from charm alone would favor F rate. But there's also another thing that ninja has concentrate. So his ninja can throw at, at four, has technically has a strike range of 14 between throw and 7 move, and can hit and do so at concentrate, with, with concentrate, which means that's just lethal. Synchronization, f -rate's team technically has a, I mean, f -rate's, Blame God's team isn't perfect at synchronization, but f -rate's team has a lot of problems. First of all, you have a 6 move Geomancer, <clears throat> who's supposed to be a leading unit, except this leading unit has virtually no offense whatsoever, and HP Restore is not the safest strategy for keeping her alive. You have a unit, you have a ninja that has 12 move, I mean 12 speed, and but and throw item, but the thing is, he has crap move. He would be a lot better if he had 6 or 7 move and was throwing stuff at range. I think, I think the purpose of that unit was supposed to um, simply be healing, rather than damage, which is why he was given knives, but considering that this, that, that this ninja still deals the most damage on your squad, you might as well maximize it some more and give it a throw. And also, item ninja, if you're going to use it, is a lot better when your ninja has higher move. And then you have a then you have a time mage with fifteen m oh and then you have a time mage with fifteen ma, which can cast cyclops for a good deal of damage, but that's still a four ctr spell after short charge, which isn't great, especially against a fast squad like like blame gods. That that could get you mid charged very easily. Also, if you look at the synchronization, there's other problems. There's that that geomancer has black robes. And the Time Mage has Magic Ring, but neither of them absorb Elemental. Again, the Ninja only has Throw Dictionary. He doesn't have Throw Shuriken. And the Samurai doesn't have a Sura, which makes any attempt at absorption from the Owen Squad, which is by far the most reliable kind of absorption, useless. 
And then you could look at the squad and you notice that all the that except for the Geomancer who has move plus two, the rest of them have teleport, fly, and ignore height. Yes, this is good at keeping the rest of your squad together. We're between four, four, and three move respectively, but that doesn't work <clears throat> if if your Geomancer is six move. The Geomancer will charge forward and die and force the rest of your squad to sandbag, which will then get the mid charge, likely. However, Blame God Synchronization isn't perfect. You have... I mean, Blame God Synchronization on that ninja is definitely right. He has 7 move, he's meant to be a kamikaze, but he can come back with Angel Rain, and he has damage play, and he has item. That, that's the... If you want a 7 move ninja that's a kamikaze, that's the right way to do it. However, there's a couple of issues here. He, he, has, he has a white mage that knows raise 2 without short charge. That's a 6 CTR spell. That's like trying to charge Flare. And even though today's metagame isn't as punishing when it comes to the S4, it's still pretty bad, and um, not having short charge on mages, casting long spells like Raze 2 is not a good idea. But though the Priestess can probably tank one hit, mid-charge. Then there, of course, the Samurai is slightly out of touch with the rest of the squad, even though she has 5 moves because she has 8 speed. And of course... Synchronization as a whole is a slight problem if you have a Kamikaze unit in front with healers in back. But then again, if he has if he has, he has Angel Ring, the units will ignore actually trying to bring him up. So, so it's not that bad on the AI. And it comes when it comes to AI, it technically shouldn't be red. It should be actually in favor of Flame God as well because that Samurai on F8 squad has I think it was Kiyomori, and Kiyomori will be spammed over Morasame even when healing is clearly necessary. And with that, let's actually start the match to see what happens. Hey folks, this is FDC, and we're going to actually start the match between f and Flame God, round the loser's bracket number 16. This is f the Geomancer, Suzaka the Samurai, Tenchi the Ninja, and Miko the Time Mage. Notice, the compats here actually aren't very helpful for f -rate. Yes, this ninja can one-shot this Doribo, but the Doribo and the Priestess can both charm this ninja at higher capacity than normal, and he does more damage than anyone else on that squad. And Suzaka has worse compat with this Samurai and this Priestess. Okay. Then we look at Blame God Squad, which has Max the Ninja, Mei the Samurai, Yogurt the Wild Bow, and Tao, and Tao the Priest. Again, good compat here, and here. So, this ninja can one-shot this time mage and bring this geomancer into critical, which may trigger HP restore, but may not. Now let's see what actually happens on Sandrat Cellar. Notice that even though this map is large, that ninja has 14 strike range between throw and um, and movement. So he can hit that ninja and is concentrated, so it's quite powerful. And like I noted before, Kiyomori is being used over Morasame, which is dumb here. Time Mage uses haste. Ninja heals himself, essentially rendering that Cure 2 from the Geomancer, pointless. Again, dumb AI. And the ninja goes down from two concentrated hits. Ninja is slowed, which might give Efray some breathing room. And the time mage charges Salamander. Deal a good amount of three units. And Charm misses this time. And so Basoda's raised. And that white mage with little else to do, you chooses to whack someone with a back. Again, not smart behavior, but this is the AI. Doesn't have to be smart. Or rather, it can't be smart. And Cyclops goes off. This time... KOing, I think, two units? No, one.
So it looks like Efraid has the advantage right now. The two charming units are down. And he's about to get four units back to strike with. And the mage casts Cyclops again. Okay, so it's now four on one. Slowing that ninja was critical, it seems. And keeping his damage capacity down. But the time mage goes down, as predicted. But so does the ninja. Okay, so F8 takes round one. One for round two between F8 and Blame God. We saw F8 take round one with a lucky slow proc off of um, Heaven's Cloud from the Samurai, which slowed the ninja, which was probably the most dangerous unit and probably the only good damage dealer on um, Blame God Squad. He then got rid of the two charming units, and without that, Blame God Squad fell apart. Let's see if that repeats itself on Araguay Woods, map 80. And yes, for those of you who were noticing, I fixed the uh, version logo, which is actually just the Jill count, so it says 1.3038. One throw from Papyrus Plate puts that time mage to critical, but then again she uses damage split. Next turn she's going to die from, from... And the ninja is charmed. This could be very bad for f immediately. And no stop proc. And Kiyomori is going to be used over healing. But then again, this time Kiyomori is not a bad idea because she has. doesn't. She has more HP and probably will survive another throw. Cyclops kills the ninja, but he has re raised, so he just heals and then runs back. If that, ninja, if that ninja stays charmed, f is going to lose. And neither unit on his squad seem, seems to show any inclination of trying to get rid of it. However, bad compat with that samurai doesn't help either. And Charm misses the samurai. Fairy brings back... No, it doesn't bring back the Geomancer. Okay, so that ninja moves back into action, but this time only to heal, because he is, he is squad mates hurt. Kiku almost takes down the time mage. And that Yuriba will try again for charm, and misses again. Now, Yuriba hasn't gotten charm once, but it doesn't matter. The time mage is down. So technically this is 5 on 1, but the charm is about to end soon, which is why the ninja is attacked now. However, this means he's abandoned his back, so he may be relatively hard to actually take down. But the ninja comes back after raise 2, so it's 4 on 2, and despite the Kiyomori's, I would argue f has this one lost. He has one unit left. And yes, although he can deal a good deal of damage and has good compass with a lot of enemy units, he can't win. All it takes is one good draw out and he's done. Like that. Alright, so welcome. This is round three between Efray and Blame God. What we saw in round two was Blame, Blame God coming back by charming first the ninja and then. The and then the enemy samurai, temporarily though, but it was the ninja charm that was decided, because charm breaks abandon, and charm allows the ninja to, well, completely dis to dismantle the other units on that squad. Let's see if this repeats itself on Nalveska Temple, map 70. Again, good compat means a good amount of damage from Papyrus Plate. And since it's so close, and the ninja's charmed again. Could f survive this? Let's see. He needs a stop proc, and he doesn't get one. But the, but the Yuri Rio finally goes down. So it's still anyone's game right here. 
Priestess goes down. Well, almost goes down. But now it's time for the ninja to attack. And, but, oh, but Charm, but he can't heal from there. The Charm AI apparently doesn't know that. And Straight Dash will not finish that Geomancer thanks to HP Restore. And no critical quick goes off. Interesting. That means Cloud. Okay, so the ninja's charmed. The priestess is about to die from Salamander. But the Yoribo is back. Who then brings back the priestess at full health? Okay, and that strong and that powerful ninja on um, Afraid Squad is don't act it. So despite the early advantage, he's now at a huge disadvantage. He this is technically four on two. Actually, no, it's not. I I misread that samurai doesn't belong. No, the technically it's four on three. Sorry, not four on two. And again, a raise two is charged. The ninja's just gonna move further and further away from the match, and because of his low movement, he really can't do anything. Okay, so it's four on two, really. That ninja is gonna have to take a turn or two to even come back and reactivate himself. That samurai is just gonna hit four targets with and bring down the Yuribo. No, he doesn't bring down the Yuribo. Okay, the samurai's dead. Charm doesn't hit. Though that would have cancelled the rays. And from here, even a bag whack would do. The ninja heals himself and prepares to return slowly but surely. Heaven's Cloud. And straight Dash. I don't know why Straight Dash wasn't casted when she was when she was charging. That would have been an awesome mid-charge. But oh well, this is enough. Essentially, notice that this is really four on one, not two, because that ninja can't do anything from that position. Kiku brings that time range back down. Straight dash attempt. Notice that straight dash does more than X potion, and I don't think she can get out of there. So if it I think that's a, that's a uh, cure two charge, but it won't matter much. This is I mean all the members can heal and resurrect, but okay, charm doesn't go off. The anti sandbagging techniques are gonna keep this are gonna keep F rate squad at the disadvantage, even with even even with four members capable of resurrection, because that's all they're gonna be doing. They're not gonna be switching to damage. While anti-sandbagging techniques are infamous for being able to hit multiple times and against multiple targets. And the ninja's finally charmed. Because of notice that this is the power of anti-sandbagging. All you have to do is keep their units down and eventually you will get an advantage. Simply because of the luck factor that's favoring um, that's favoring Flame God, and the ninja goes down despite his despite his abandon. Again, one of the two isn't hurt, so she casts Kiyomori instead. Now this is 4v1. They're just waiting on that samurai to um die. And to be honest, this was this will soon be over because when there's only one person left, there's no way they can stop this many units. Especially if 
charm just prolongs the battle. And, okay, this is over. Name God wins. Efrit, you've been eliminated.